this 11th session of Look at the Book on Romans 8. We're going to finish, starting here at verse 10, finish this paragraph. So, Father, as we focus on the glorious truth that goes beyond the Spirit's sway in our lives now to the Spirit's raising us from the dead, uh, fill us with hope, I pray, just as Paul intended. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's start at the beginning here and just get the context, and we'll pick it up where we left off last time. You, however, are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, if, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. So we argued that the Spirit of God being in us puts us in the Spirit, namely in the sway and control of the Spirit. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, and he shifts to Christ from Spirit of God to Spirit of Christ because he wants to draw attention to the fact that it was the work of Christ by which we belong to him. We were bought with a price, therefore we're not our own. We belong, we're owned by him, by Jesus Christ. So a second, this is is one, a second effect of having the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Christ dwell in us is that it is the seal of belonging to Christ. When Christ died for us, he bought us, and therefore the Spirit of Christ in us is the seal that we are his. And now we pick it up at verse 10. But if Christ is in you, this said, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But, now, if Christ is in you, if Christ is in you, and he shifts from Spirit of Christ, so from Spirit of God to Spirit of Christ to Christ, if Christ is in you, and just let me pause right there and draw your attention to something, because we shouldn't distinguish in essence between the Spirit of Christ being uh, in us and Christ being in us. Look at what Jesus said back in John 14. He said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. So that's the Spirit. He will give it to you. To be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, Spirit of truth, there's the helper, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you, probably referring to himself, and will be in you, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So he seems to be saying, I will come to you is the same as I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. So we already have indications in the teachings of Jesus that the Spirit and Jesus are the same reality. It's the Spirit of Jesus who comes to us, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same, different persons, but one divine essence. So here the Spirit of Christ and Christ are used interchangeably. But if Christ is in you, although your body is dead, your body is dead because of sin, your, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So he introduces now the massive issue of your body's going to die and yet it will be raised from the dead because evidently the question is just immediately there. If you're glorifying Christ and the Spirit to such a degree as Paul is, then the question would arise, well, am I so saved? Is, Is Christ's work so sufficient and the Spirit so powerful that I can just skip death and go straight to glory? And Paul is saying, no, it's not going to work that way. The body is dead because of sin. In other words, we're saved in stages. Our sins are forgiven now completely. No sin is held against us now, but the effects of sin in killing us are going to happen. So the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit, and I think this probably is the best translation because it says life, not just is alive. We could say our spirits are alive, but that's not what the word says. This word is life. The Spirit is life, resurrection life, uh, body dead, conquering life because of righteousness. And 
Some scholars take that to mean, some interpreters take that to mean my righteousness, like the Holy Spirit is in me, he's holding sway over the flesh, and I'm getting victory, and the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus is setting me free from the law of sin and death. All that's true. It just won't work, as far as I can tell here, because of this, because it, it, it doesn't work to say the Spirit is at work in a life-giving way in me because I am righteous, because I am producing righteous deeds. That doesn't work because it's precisely because of the Spirit being in me that I'm enabled to do that righteousness. It's His being in me that puts me in His sway and enables me to do righteousness. So this because of righteousness here requires, I think, that this is the righteousness of God in Christ. We are in Christ Jesus, and because we're in Christ Jesus, look back here, there is no condemnation, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus because of what God has done in condemning sin in the flesh. And there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus because in Christ Jesus, there is a righteousness that counts for me, namely the righteousness of Jesus Christ counts for me. So I think that's what's going on here. Because Christ has died for me, paid for me, provided a, a punishment for my sin and righteousness for my life. Therefore, the Spirit uh, is at work in me. And that's what we saw in verses 1 to 4. And now he finishes like this to show how the Spirit, being life, is going to solve the problem of the body dying. If the Spirit of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead. That's God the Father, right? This Him is God the Father. The Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life. That's what we saw here. The Spirit is life. So is He going to bring the Spirit in? He is indeed. The Spirit is life. The Father will give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit, because the Spirit is life. And therefore, when he dwells in us, he secures our resurrection. So let's just point out the three uh, great effects of the Spirit being in us. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, then you are in the Spirit, and He is holding sway and giving you victory over uh, the bondage of the flesh. Number two, if the Spirit of Christ uh, is in you, if you have Him, if He's in you, then you belong to Christ. He seals the fact that Christ purchased you and you belong to Him. And now thirdly, if He dwells in you, if the Spirit dwells in you, then He gives life to your mortal bodies, and you have resurrection for this dead body. Oops, not there. Here. Dead body. So three great effects. He controls us, and he seals our belonging to Jesus, and he will raise us from the dead.